the story that it's telling is the story inherently of the universe itself. There's a moment where the universe um, kind of snaps into being. It's really the horizon line at which we begin to determine a difference, this moment of, of really radical differentiation between the beginning, the, the gluon plasma, where there's this super hot ball of where everything is like everything else. Now that's a mathematical space. Everything is the same. But at the moment that it switches and the universe begins to cool down is this moment where the four forces suddenly drop away from each other and create a spectrum that is so vast it allows everything different in the universe to take place. And this moment is called the last scatterer. In um, 2006, uh, I was walking around New York with David Ajay, and we went to see a show called The H Edge at Artist Space. David and I had been talking about how to make a building that could contain the universe. And it was right around then that um, we began to talk about the idea of a building that rather than having a model of the universe inside it, was itself a model of the universe. And David introduced me very quickly thereafter to Daniel and the uh, Arab AGU, um, who he saw as the ideal practice to sort of make this a reality. A short while after that, it became completely clear that a building like that didn't really need a container of any kind, and David very gracefully stepped aside. And uh, Daniel introduced me to a couple of young architects in New York called Aranda Lash, who had been working on aggregations with him in the past. Matthew's proposition of creating a piece which represented the structure of the universe was uh, fascinating to, to me and to AGU because of the work that uh, we're interested in, which is mathematics and, uh, and uh, physics and uh, form and structure. And um, so we, uh, we took it, you know, um, very happily on. He, he kind of uh, posed a lot of um, questions about uh, uh, what a building should be, what architecture should be, what art should be, what structure should be, and we, I think we turned it upside down um, and came up with something that's new from all those disciplines and aspects. We're not starting from kind of conventional Cartesian organizations of straight lines and, uh, and uh, straight angles. We're, uh, we're actually looking at uh, how matter forms uh, in, 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 in space um, and uh, how this can organize space around it. It is telling a story. It's not simply a, you know, we, we, you could make, and we've made many models that show the truncated tetrahedral stacking up and aggregating. And one of the beautiful things is that they scale. But it doesn't necessarily create a lot of drama. Uh, it doesn't create difference. And this notion of creating difference and change across the structure is kind of the essential um, quality because it's a, a nice idea that we make these structures for eternity, for the ages, that, that everything we make is like the pyramids, that every architect is, you know, Ramses. And, but really, we all know that most modern structures are you know, ephemera. They're going to be torn down 50 years, maybe the most. And um, one of the reasons for this is that they, they don't contain really in themselves anything more than an expression of, of uses. They don't have a kind of mystery to them. I'm fascinated by the idea that this, this can talk about the structure of the universe, but also immediately it makes me think of um, uh, the structure of matter at a molecular structure and a molecular level. Perhaps the uh, interesting thing about this project is uh, that we've, dev you know, we've devised a system uh, to create, uh, separate, organize space uh, and therefore create architecture. I think the thing that's most satisfying for me is the idea you know, that we might potentially have created a work of art that is useful, um, which is an extraordinary thing. It's, you know, it's like legitimately useful in the world. Like it can do all the kinds of things that non-art things can do. Like it's a real thing that nonetheless retains all of its artistic integrity. And like that's a real, it's a very rare thing to be able to, and how that manifests itself, you know, time will tell. Not only does it feel like a bridge and look like a bridge, but it is a literal bridge that you can walk across between art 
and engineering and architecture and mathematics and music and all these things. And to find that all these people found that useful gives me such incredible pleasure. And they get um, equal satisfaction from it, proves it all the more that they walk in, the musicians walk in and feel like, well, this is my project. Or Daniel can walk in and go, this is my project, I did this. Actually validates that feeling even more. Like, so you go, like, this is truly you know, an instantiation of like, what the kind of potential that our culture has to unlock all of this you know, thinking we've done about all these things. It's like, well, now is the time. Now we have the tools. Now we can make things like this. So we have to make it.